We are going to be looking at some of the cool technologies involved in Ethernet. Now, the Ethernet Alliance produces every year what's called a roadmap, and in it highlights new technologies, new standards that are implemented for that year. In this case, we're going to be looking at the Ethernet Alliance's Ethernet Roadmap for 2025. And in it are lots of cool technologies involving networking that are of interest to any IT pro or IT student. Let's jump in and take a look at one of those. This featured in the Ethernet 2025 Roadmap. And that's fiber to the home. As of 2025, about 19% of Americans are connected by fiber to the home. Delivering Ethernet, multimedia, whatever, is being delivered by your broadband provider. Now, I am not sure of the percentage for Canadians, South Americans. Put your comments if you're in those countries and you're watching this channel. Would love your feedback on what is your country or your area's percentage of broadband being delivered by fiber. I know Europe is going that direction. In fact, it has surpassed DSL for Europe. There were five big milestones that really have changed the dynamics of fiber to the home. In 2013 to 2015, the EU made some major changes in policy. The US FCC broadband goals changed significantly, really kind of upping the amount of megabits per second download recommendations and upload recommendations. Then there was the new launch of the ITU standard for XGS PON or the passive optical network, which we'll see plays a major role in fiber to the home. Then of course, China's broadband plan, which really put 300 million fiber to the home subscribers. We saw that Japan and South Korea reached almost 50% of fiber to the home penetration. COVID-19 in 2019, we saw work from home and remote education really creating a high demand for fiber to the home. And then lastly, the infrastructure bill here in the U.S. proposed about $65 billion into broadband delivery, which fiber to the home was a important part of that. So those are huge things that are really driving fiber to the home. Now, fiber to the home or any broadband delivery of ethernet to your house, your apartment, or your office starts with a central office. It can be very different for every geographical area, but this is a typical CEO of a company that's delivering broadband to a geographical area, and I'm not sure where this is being delivered at. But this is your central office. You're going to have a lot of high-end, very expensive network gear in these data centers. Your central office is very important. As you can look at my fiber to home architecture here in this graphic, here's where you get your PSTN network, your POTS telephone system brought in. You get the internet, local TV broadcast signals, all of the media that's going to be delivered via broadband in your area or by your vendor, whether that's Comcast or, or whoever, is brought into the CO. And then it's all turned into digital. And at that point is where we begin in some companies moving it from this CO from that point on. It's going to be passive optical network, PON. And then eventually it gets to your home where it's delivered via fiber and then converted into Ethernet. If you look at the generation of PON or passive optical network, which is real critical in delivering fiber to the home, you can see the generations of EPON, GPON, XGPON, and then XGSPON. Well, XGS PON is the new standard for, you got it, Ethernet Alliance 2025. And notice it's 10 gigs up and 10 gigs down. So we're seeing symmetrical delivery of 10 gigabits over these PON networks, passive optical networks. With this technology, we can, between wherever our CO is 
and our residents are, we can deliver fiber to the home using PON with a maximum distance of about 20 kilometers. So Mr. Vanderpool, do all broadband providers have this kind of architecture? No, they have a mixed bag. They have old technology, new technology, hybrid technology. So nobody probably looks just like this diagram or this graphic, except maybe new deployments or Spectrum is deploying to a new geographical area. They may design it just like this. If you step back and look at some of their old deployments, they've got old ancient technology with new technology. It's a very mixed bag out there. So in our CO, all of that from the residents coming back to the CO, they would pop into a piece of equipment that looks something like this. And each pond port can serve up to 128 residences or apartment. So every single port that you see on this very interesting piece of a network of gear can serve up to 128, what we call ONT. And that's basically your resident piece of equipment. Another slide of this technology, you can see on the transmission side, I've got a pawn piece of equipment that's gonna then go into a splitter right here in the center that can take one pawn uh, optical output, goes bi-directional, goes into the splitter, and then is delivered into these residences ONT pieces of equipment. This particular vendor doesn't call them ONT, it calls them O-U-N. So everybody has a lot of their own, basically the device in your house. This is a great chart that shows you the passive optical networks that are delivering fiber to the home. And you can see some of the old technology as well as some of the XGS PON, which is your newest, latest, greatest passive optical network, and you can see the wavelengths that they're using. Now, this is a close-up of that same chart, so you can take a look at the nanometer wavelength. You can see the nanometers and frequency that laser is using for PON. Another important advancement in fiber to the home is micro-trenching. Now, this is being done a lot in Europe, and Google Fiber done in the U.S. is also using micro-trenching, where they're taking these saw blades, cutting through asphalt and concrete, and just cutting this tiny little trench in the ground, putting the fiber optic cable in there, throwing some kind of composite adhesive over the top of all of that, and delivering that last mile. Here you can see the diagram micro-trenching, where you're cutting through rock, asphalt, concrete, dirt, whatever, and laying in your cables. And here's a picture of where you can see they can split it in different directions. So they can bring a cable and then pass it through different directions to different households. Now you can imagine being put in the ground or the concrete or asphalt in places like Des Moines and Montana, the jacket on that fiber optics cable better be tough because they got cold, hot, moisture, everything. So the jacket around that fiber optic cable has to be able to take some really harsh environment. Now fiber to the home has to get to that final destination. There's a couple ways that it can get there. It can go above ground, which is typically called aerial or pole transmission. It also can go in ground. There are many situations where it uses both. It delivered via aerial or pole, and then eventually at some point goes into the ground. It depends on the neighborhood, it depends on the city, depends on where you're at. In this picture, you see a technician on a pole. He's actually working with really tough fiber optic cable that he's bringing down from the pole down to a residence. The technology and the connectors are all built, designed to take this harsh environment. Lots of products in this space, splitters that hang on a pole, hang on a support uh, wire. You can have splitters, amplifiers. You've got all kinds of things that can make fiber to the home happen in an aerial situation. This is one of Corning's solutions that allows them to take the fiber optics on the pole, provide exit point for it to come off the pole, down to the residence. And you can see it 
It's watertight. It's very resistant to harsh elements. This particular installation is near the ocean where salt is a real corrosive factor and it does great. A lot of fiber to the home comes via in ground. So here's an example. You see fiber optic cables coming up and they're going to be spliced into this junction box. Here you can see a splitter that can take a fiber optic input and then break it out into a neighborhood. This is common where we have both aerial and in-ground delivery of fiber to the home. Now the devices inside the home are called ONTs and basically they're an interface box. It takes fiber, converts it into ethernet. Doing fiber to the home in the city is really complex. Here you see a bunch of guys pulling fiber through manholes in the city. I wouldn't want that job. Here's an example in the area that I am living at. Here we see my local city county government has its own fiber optics to provide county city services to the community. This is a local fiber optics company that's delivering fiber to various neighborhoods. Of course, not mine, but other neighborhoods and when they bring the splices up out of the ground these are splice boxes and they're indicated by these uh, plastic containers that protect the splices. Anytime you're breaking out fiber and bringing it to the home the cables and the jackets and the connectors have to be really rugged and able to take harsh and tough conditions. There's nothing easy about an install technician who's installing fiber to your home, he's not the gentlest of souls. Here's a 3M termination box. It can be right inside the home and terminate that fiber and then bring it into an interface box. This is interesting. This is an example of AdTrans complete package that would deliver fiber inside the home. They've got a nice interface box. Notice they have an electrical outlet that they use. They also have their interface box and all the necessary trappings to bring fiber to the home and produce ethernet for the customer. Now my son lives less than a mile away from where I live and this is his fiber interface box. His neighborhood has fiber. My neighborhood does not. Don't you love it? So here the fiber optic cable comes into the quantum fiber interface box and you have ethernet out and a power cable. Here I have another friend who has fiber optics being delivered to their home. And here you can see over the green is the fiber optic cable. And then you get an ethernet out and you have one that goes to a wireless access point to provide wireless to the home. Here's another view and you can see I've got my optical light so I can tell whether I'm getting the necessary optics and laser light to this interface box. So if that optic light is out, you know you got problems with your fiber. Lots of manufacturers out there are producing the ONT fiber to the home interface devices. In our quick video that we've done on fiber to the home, you may want to learn more. Tech Savvy Productions is really a serious technical channel. If you want to learn more, let me show you a few of our videos that we've done that will take you to a deeper level. DOCSIS is a standard that really a lot of broadband providers use and it's really important to understand DOCSIS in terms of broadband delivery. So if you want to know more, I've got my YouTube video URL there. I also have a QR code you can scan. It will take you to the video. This will take you in depth into DOCSIS 3.1 and 4.0. If you'd like to know more about PON, which we've talked about here, that's the optical transmission system, which is using wavelength division multiplexing. If you don't have a good understanding on it, take a look at this video. It's called Edge WDM, and it really explains some of the concepts in WDM, which is what PON uses. I also finished a recent video on more in depth of the various types of optical fiber. You can take a look at this one. This is a deep dive, a lot of fun, very interesting if you're interested in optical transmissions, all the different flavors of fiber optics and how they get lots of data across one or two fiber runs. All of our videos are produced in multiple languages as well as many subtitles. 
for sometimes 30 different languages. A big thank you to always our members, our viewers, and subscribers. You can become a member. Just click the membership, join, and you can become a member of this channel.